Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Looks like you're already giving him glory. Hallelujah. Good morning now, church. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless the Lord and forget not all his benefits. Who healeth all diseases. Come on, magnify the Lord in this place. This is the day the Lord has made. We've come to lift him up. Hallelujah. We've come to give him glory. Hallelujah. We've come to call on him because his name is worthy. We've come to call on 
You just lift your hands up. 
what we know that you are able to do exceeding abundantly above more than what we could ever ask or think. We believe you, Lord. We give the worship to him. Just encourage you right where you are. Just begin to just say thank you to him. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to worship, for the privilege to praise. We'll wait on you. Yes, God, we'll wait. Thank you, Jesus. For you give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope and you restore every heart that is broken. Thank you, Jesus. For great are you, Lord. You give life. He's love. You bring life. You give hope. Thank you. Here's our hearts. We lift up and sing great. For it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. It's for you only, it's for you, God. We sing to him, you are life.
recognize it's your breath. It's your, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Thank you. You only for great are you, Lord. For great are you, Lord. Let's begin to tell him he's great. Just when you think about his greatness, our mouths are filled with praise. That's why the angels just continue to say, holy, 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 our voices and sing out in great are you Lord yes God sing great is your faithfulness oh Lord my father and there is no shadow of turning with thee and all I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is your faithfulness, Lord, unto thee. Great is thy faithfulness. Woo! Great is thy 
That's a good place to put your hands together. And as you clap your hands, open up your mouth. Because I come to tell somebody, you, there's power. There's power. There's wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There's healing. There's healing. There's wonder working healing in the precious blood of the Lamb. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There's no greater name that I know. Why don't you just bow your heads and close your eyes right where you are. Lord, we thank you, God, and we magnify your name in this place. Lord, you are great and greatly to be praised. Lord, we come to celebrate, sing unto the Lord. We will sing unto him a new song. Lord, your report says that we're healed. Your report says that we're filled. Your report says that we're free. Your report says that we have the victory. God, and we bless your name this morning. You've been so good. We couldn't even tell it all, God. Lord, if we had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough to say thank you. But Lord, we just came. We just woke up this morning just to say thank you. We came into your house this morning just to say thank you, Lord, to let you know there's nobody like you. There's nobody above you. There's nobody beneath you. There's nobody even close. God, you are a good God, and you've been so good to us. So many doors you opened, so many ways you made, God, times you heal time. You block stuff we didn't know about. So, Lord, we just say thank you for the stuff we've seen and the stuff that we haven't seen that you've done. Lord, we just say thank you. But, God, we also say thank you for what's coming down the road. God, we believe that our blessing is on the way. We believe our healing is on the way. We believe that door that's being opened is on the way. God, so we're going to give you a layaway praise, God. We're not going to wait till the battle's over. We're going to shout right now because we know how this thing turns out, God. Over and over and over again, you show yourself strong. Do a work right now, God, in our innermost being. So when we leave here, God, we are moved. We are driven. We are seen by faith, God. God, we thank you, Lord, for what you've done, and we thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. That's a good place to put your hands together. And as you clap your hands, open up your mouth and give the Lord some praise. I said, as you clap your hands, open up your mouth and give the Lord some praise. I believe he deserves a praise. Clap your hands and open up your mouth and give the Lord some praise. Lord, you're worthy. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Anybody glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Anybody saying, Pastor Nate, that's me, that's me. I was glad when they said, come unto me. Let us go into the house of the Lord. And even though some stuff tried to shake me this week, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. Something told me everything is going to be all right. Something whispered in my ear. Get up and go to church because everything is going to be all right. Something told me that God is in control. God is in control. I want to greet you all name by name and person by person to Now Church. My name is Pastor Nate, and this is Lady T, the first lady of this crib. And we want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so glad that you decided to come and entrust us with 90 minutes of your time on a Sunday. So many other things that you could be doing, but the fact that you're with us, we're honored. We don't take it for granted, and we sent, we hope above all that you sense the presence of God. That greeting is not just for the people who are here physically with us in the service, but if you're watching online, you're streaming online, watching YouTube, Facebook, however you're watching this broadcast, if you're watching a later moment, we so want to say welcome, welcome, welcome. We're so glad you're there. We know our people on Facebook, y'all are already greeting each other and talking to one another Amen. And so we're so glad that you decided to be with us this morning. Here at Now Church, we love having company. This is the South. We are Southern. We are country folk. We love when people show up for the first time. So much so, we like to make a big deal of you. Don't worry about it. 
I'm going to tell you what we will do and what we're not going to do. Amen. We are going to make a big deal of you. We are going to clap. We are going to make a, bit, uh, a lot of noise because we do love having company, but we're not going to touch you. Amen. Because we're still in a live pandemic. We are a huggy, Philly church, but we can't do that right now. We're not going to put the microphone in your hand and have you say anything. Amen. We may not be able to get the microphone back from you. Amen. You may be testifying and say, oh, Pastor Nate, I got a testimony. I want to bless that one wonderful name of Jesus, amen. Then one of these guys in blue will have to come and take the microphone for you, amen. So we're not going to do that. We're not going to ask you where your home church is, who your pastor is, if you own watch care here at Now Church, but we just want to make a big deal of you because we love having company. So if you are a first-time guest, if this is your first time being in service with us, if you could stand to your feet so we can greet you in the name of the Lord. Any first-time guests, amen. Look at all our first-time guests. Look at all our company this morning. Somebody from my church, just look at them and just give them the, we see you sign. That, that, that's, that's our universal sign for touching. Just, y'all remember that back in there? Do people still do that? Is that old school? Just, just, just hey, I see you. I see you. You walk, you walk in the mall. You ain't got time to talk. You're just like, I, I see you. So that's, that's, I just want to let everybody know that's our universal sign at Now Church until we can start touching. So, uh, so we got some guests here, some guests there, and we got a guest here. So everybody looks. Look over here to my right, your left, and everybody just just throw your head up at them. Let them know we. All right, now y'all, now everybody turn and look right here. It's kind of to my right, and just throw your head up and look. look. Yeah, we see you. And then we got a guest. We got two guests over here. Gentlemen right here from, from Fairmont. Are you from Fairmont too? Hey, where? South Carolina, Aiden, South Carolina. So y'all, everybody turn to my left, turn to your right, and just kind of, just give them the nod. Now put your hands together for our first time guests. Those of you that are watching online, there's a connect card that will come up and you fill that out. Just some real basic general information that we love for you to get. Nothing too extensive. Um, at the end of the service, you can go out to our lobby and you can take your phone and you can punch in your uh, QR code. You say, Pastor Nate, I'm old school. I need something to fill out. Uh, we understand you can get a card. And it's just some real basic general information that we love to get from you. Nothing too extensive. And um, for being our first time guest, for being our special guest, we have this Now Church mug for you, amen. A gift from us to you, no strings attached. Just something that we really want you to have, something that we pull together. And again, we are above all, we hope that you sense the presence of God. We are Now Church, where we believe your right now affects your everyday life, amen. We believe that your praise, your worship, your giving, it's going to run over and you're going to see this in your everyday life. Amen. I don't just want to feel the presence of God in this place, but I want to feel it when I leave here. Amen. I'm looking for a miracle. Anybody looking for a miracle? I'm looking for one. I'm not just hoping one. I'm looking for a miracle. I'm looking for the apostle. Amen. I'm looking for God to do something that only he can get credit for. Amen. Amen. Anybody ready to give us unto the Lord? We got any chill forgivers? Why don't you turn your attention to the screen? We got a video we want you to see, man. Hey, what's going on? This is Pastor Nate. You know how we get down. You know how we do here at Now Church. We believe that God has called us for a time such as this to be one of the churches that be the hands and the feet and the mouthpiece of Jesus in the community. So we have partnered with Aspiring Eagles program, an incoming freshman program at North Carolina Central University, and we're going to serve groceries to over 100 families in McDougal Terrace there in Durham, North Carolina. We are a Chapel Hill-based church with a triangle reach July 3rd service project at McDougal Terrace. We'll see you there. So we believe that we've been called to be the hands and feet of Jesus in this community, amen. We are Chapel Hill based with a triangle reach, amen. We are reaching the area for the Lord. And so there's a couple of ways that you can give. I wanted y'all to see that because we're able to do that because of you. Our outreach coordinator, uh, Danielle Augie. Can y'all put your hands together for her and our husband, Al. They're so glad we got a building now because, and all the volunteers that work with them, uh, they're so glad that we have a building now. Their, their, built, their house has served as the outreach warehouse for the past two and a half years. I know Al, when he heard we got this building, he started shouting. He said, oh, I get my living room back. And, and so uh, they, they were throwing stuff at us. Here, take all these, take these book bags and everything. 
But they and the um, team, the outreach team to work with them, they have been the hands and the feet um, for Jesus in the community and everybody who works with them. So we just wanted y'all to see what we're, what we're doing. You're doing that. I'm doing that. I give here. My family, we tithe and we give here. And so the Bible says that when you give to those who don't have, that he gives thanks to God on your generosity. So you're saying, Pastor Nate, you got seed in the ground. If you give here, you got seed in the ground. You got some seed over there at Northside. You got some seed over there at McDougal Terrace. You got some seed in the people that we give. You got seed in the ground so you can expect a harvest. Amen. Now, one of the things, I'm not, I don't really have a green thumb. Amen. My, I was talking to one of my best friends, Waylon, the other day, and he was really upset because he had hired this lawn company to work on his grass. Now, the thing about it is, I didn't see what he saw because I thought his grass looked pretty good. He said, I got the worst looking grass in the neighborhood. I said, well, brother, do not come around the corner because I don't know what you're going to say about my, I am not trying to get yard of the year. I'm not, a, a good grass cutting to me is cut it as low as you can. I'm trying to get two weeks, two weeks. Everybody say two weeks. I'm trying to get two weeks. I'm not running around, I'm not throwing. Them. But one of the things that I learned from uh, uh, from Waylon is there's a certain amount of time that you got to get seed in the ground. As he was telling me this conversation that he was having with this other individual, she said, we're going to come out and we're going to put some seed in the ground right now. He said, nobody plants in July. He said, nobody sows seed in July because it's hot. He said, when you got to get some seed in the ground, it's in the fall, September. See, I we, we just say, be dope on your level. You can't, I, 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 if I do hear a word, if I hear a man or woman of God, preach a word, I do go sow something, but I'm not because I'm saying, Lord, I'm confirming what I heard from you, but I don't believe I can just throw some money at the Lord and make him do something. That's why we said, just be consistent and do what? Be dope on your level, because when you got C in the ground, you always looking for something to come up. You always looking for something. In sunshine and rain, you always, so the thing about it is, giving gives you a confidence to always be looking for something. And that's what we want you to have. We want you to have confidence that God gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so all your needs will be met. That's our prayer. We want you to be consistent. Why? Because we want all your needs to be met. Because it's hard to give when your knee's not met. Come on, I'll I raise my hand. Come on, I'll I raise my hand. So I'm saying, Lord, you give seed to the soil, bread to the eater, be dope on your little. Why? So your knees can be met, and then, but there's an order in the Bible, and then you can be generous on every occasion. So the Lord said, if I'm giving you seed, and you are consistent, your needs will be met, and then I'll give you more than enough. Amen. Then you can be generous on every occasion. I want to be somebody that God trusts. I want God to give me more than enough so I can be what? Generous on every occasion. But our prayer is we want your needs to be met. We don't want your electric bill money and you don't have lights. We want your needs to be met first. Then he said he'll give you more than us so you can be what? Generous on every occasion. But it's hard to have an expectation and to be looking for something to pop off if you don't have seed in the ground. So you want to be what? Dope on your level. Amen. A couple of ways you can give this morning. Number one, you can give via Cash App now, Church NC. You can text to give, 84321. You can go online and give, nowchurchnc.com. Also, you can go to the app store on your phone, and you can uh, find Church Center app. 
punch in 27517. Now church will come up, and all that you give will go to what you call us to do, P.O. Box. You can send it in um, if that's how you roll, if you're paying by check a money order. If you're saying, Pastor Nate, I'm old school, and I saw some of you already were writing. I was giving people um, time to start writing, finish writing. If you need a giving envelope, you can get one from one of our frontline guys, these gentlemen in blue. And we have two giving stations in the back, and all that you'll give will go to what God has called us to do. Amen. We believe that God has called us here for a time of such as this. Amen. Amen. By your heads, and let's pray for this offering. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this another opportunity, Lord, that you allowed us to give. Lord, we believe that what your word says is true. You give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, Lord, so that we can give, so that our needs will be met. And God, you said that you'll give us more than enough so that we can be generous on every occasion. There's somebody, Lord, that doesn't have to give. Lord, they just wanted to be in the service. They just wanted to hear some people scream, you can do anything but fail, God. They're looking for a miracle this week, God. Father, we pray you do a work worthy of your name, God. Even if they couldn't praise, even if they couldn't worship, God, we thank you, Lord, that through their tears, God, you came for their request, God. And Lord, we thank you they made their request known, Lord. We want all to see how great is our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you as you give. God bless you as you give. And as you app, cash app, text, go online, app store, all of that. Amen. Stand to your feet. We're going to worship the Lord some more. And then we're going to get into the word of God. I know that we're supposed to be doing uh, more than a day. Uh, what do you expect? But the Lord gave me, the Lord went another way. Amen. I got a word. The Lord went another way. I want you to look at your neighbor right now and say, keep on going. Keep on going. Keep on, keep on going. Keep, keep on. I'm going to preach. Keep on going. Keep, keep on going. I'm going to go down there and get myself together in these four men. Keep on. Keep on going. Anybody believe in God for stuff? Anybody? You see, I, the Lord said, keep, just keep on going. Keep, keep, keep on going. You, you go run into something that looks like God. Just keep on going. Just Keep on praising. Just keep on moving. You're going to run into something that looks like the Lord. Scriptures won't be up there because I'm going to go get it right now. But the Lord told me to preach on keep on going. Amen.
on, say that. There is power in the name of Jesus. Come on, say power. Power in Everybody say there's power in Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. So much power, yeah. Say things change when we call. Things change when we call you, Jesus. Things change when we call you, Everything has to change. Things change when we call you, Jesus. Things change when we call you, Jesus.
Anybody ready to get into the word of the Lord? Continue to stand to your feet right where you are as our custom here at Now Church. Let's stand for the reading of the word of God. You're saying, Pastor Nate, why do you do that? Because we're saying that the word of God is first place in your life. Anybody knows that you are who he says you are. And we pray that during this time that something that the Holy Spirit reminds you of who God says you are and that the devil is a lion under your feet. Amen. And so get your iPads out. I got my Bible, I'm old school, your laptop, or however you look at the Word of God. Same for those of you at home, your iPad, mobile device, laptop, Bible, however you look at the Word of God. The scriptures won't be up there. They'll probably try, um, but it's my fault. The Lord said, go another way, man. Just praise and worship and what they were saying and how they were saying you can open up your mouth and there's power and everything. The Lord said, we're going to go another way. That's I, I like doing series preachers preaching, but I like being obedient to the word of the Lord. Thank God for your power of presentation, amen, but I want to know what God says, amen. I want to come in and feel the atmosphere in the room and be able to feel the people and feel what do they need to hear. Thank God for your little studying this week, Pastor Nate. I know you put in some studying, but what does the word of God, what does the word have to say? We were going to talk about um, more than a day, what to expect, and we were talking about how being in a relationship with the Lord and God being the Father, he lent his name out, and so what should you expect from the Lord? You should expect a name change, amen. You should expect to look like him. You should expect confidence. You should expect resurrection power, and you should expect to be rescued. That's going to be next week. I'm just trying to let y'all know I did study, amen. Because sometimes people go, oh, the Lord, the Lord moving another way. No, nah, you ain't study. You up there making up stuff. But I did study. The, the scripture was Matthew chapter 16, 16 through 30, and then it was 1 John 3 and 2. Just to let y'all know, I ain't getting up here about to make up something. But y'all want to hear what does say the Lord, amen. And so turn me to 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 17. And we're going to start reading at verse 7. And again, if it's not on the screens anywhere, that's totally the Lord's fault, amen. You take it up, up, up with him. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 17, and we're going to start reading verse 7. I just want to encourage you this morning. I won't be before you long, but just, I just want to encourage somebody to keep on moving, to keep on moving. Keep on moving. You're going to run into something that looks like God. And uh, the head of my Bible says, Elijah and the widow at Zarephath. And it says, sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And then the word of the Lord came to him. I want to stop right there. I'm going to let the word preach. Have you ever had something going on and then you turn around and something else has happened? Right here, there's a famine in the land. And the Lord said, I'm going to take, he told Elijah, this is somebody who's working for the Lord. Have you ever felt like, why, this ain't supposed to be happening to the church people. This ain't supposed to be happening to people who praise. This ain't supposed to be happening to people who worship. This ain't supposed to be happening to people who give. But Elijah is one of the dopest prophets that ever worked for the Lord. And he is in a tough place. Anybody ever found yourself in a tough place before? And one, the Lord, do you not know? It's me. It's me standing in the need of prayer. You, you wanted to sing that song that Marcus was singing. Come by here, my Lord. Come by, by here. Somebody's praying. I'm praying. Somebody needs you. It's me, Lord. Do not pass me by. And so Elijah is in this situation right here where he's gone from bad to worse. God had ravens sustaining him, and then he sends them to another spot. I don't know about you. I want to go from glory to glory. But has anybody ever went from bad to work? You kind of like, do not bring me no more bad news. And you feel like, oh, do you not see what's going on? And it says that then he went to this new place. He went to this place called Zarephath, and then the brook dried up. So he wasn't eating, and now he can't drink. And so again, reading says, sometime later, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And the word of the Lord came to him, go once at Zarephath. He sent him to a, a bad place in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. 
Oh, okay, so somebody there got food. Then he went up to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called her and asked, would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may drink? As she was going to get it, he called and bring me, and please bring me a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I do not have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I'm gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Verse 13, Elijah said, it's, all, it's okay for us to read the word of God, amen. Okay. Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. Then make something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day of the Lord sends rain on the land. She went away and did as Elijah told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and for her family. Verse 16 says, for... The jar of flour was not used up, and the jar of oil did not run dry, in the keeping of the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Verse 17, so things have gotten good. They got food, they got something to drink, they got something to eat, and they got something left over. Amen. They got leftovers. Uh, I don't know if the little boy wanted to eat that, but they got leftovers. Amen. And verse 17 says, sometime later, the son of the woman who owned the house became ill. He grew worse and worse and finally stopped breathing. She said to Elijah, what do you have against me, man of God? Did you come to remind me of my sin and kill my son? Verse 19, give me your son, Elijah replied. He took him from her arms, carried him to the upper room where he was staying and laid him on his bed. Then he cried out to the Lord, Lord my God, have you brought tragedy even on this widow I'm staying with by causing her son to die? Then he stretched himself out on the boy three times and cried out to the Lord, Lord my God, let this boy's life return to him. Verse 22, then the Lord heard Elijah's cry and the boy's life returned to him and he lived. And he lived. We trying to get you to cry out to the Lord because something that looks dead, it can live. If you just cry out to the Lord. I didn't say cry out to Pastor Nate, but if there's something that looks dead and you feel like, my Lord, my God, if you cry out to the Lord, we believe that it can live. The title of my message this morning is Keep On Going. Hey, just, 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 just keep on going. Bow your heads and let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this another opportunity, Lord, that you have given me to communicate a concept from your word, God. Lord, we pray right now that it falls on good soil, God, Lord, that we may be everything that you have called us to be, Lord, not just be, but say, God, we're going to say what you say, God. We're going to approach what we're facing, God, that looks so big in a different manner now because we know that you are on our side. Lord, that you care for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Keep on going. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Anybody, clap your hands if you are believing God for anything. And it's been a while since you start believing. It's been a while since you start confessing. We want to let you know to keep on going. You know, in my um, greeting in the beginning, one of the things that I do is I say, this is the South. Amen. This is the South, and, 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 and this is the country. Even being from Chapel Hill and this church being in Chapel Hill, there's still a lot of the street names that I don't know. Have you ever lived somewhere for such a long time that there's street names that you don't know? You know you just go down the street, you take a left, you take another left, you keep on going, and you're going to be there. So the other day, one of the tricks, you know, why people are traveling, and if you're traveling now, and I know we got GPS sometimes, but one of the things that can happen is you get to a place where there's not a lot of service, your GPS can go out. And there's a particular type of person that you look for when you go to a town as a small town. You don't want to look for somebody that looks like a outsider like you are. You want to look for a local. And so the other day I was with somebody, I can't remember who I was with, but my GPS went out and I was talking to Lady T on the phone, and so I stopped by a gas station. I don't know why the people with directions are always at a gas station, but that's the safest place to stop by. You stop at a gas station. So I stopped at a gas station, and I was looking for somebody who looked like a local. And I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. 
Searched high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. I was trying to find somebody who was greater than my GPS, and I saw somebody, and she was kind of what we call a tweener. A tweener. That means she looked like a local, but she didn't really look like a local. She did, but she didn't. You know, she had a mom car on a thing, but she had an uh, out-of-state license plate. So I was trying to figure out, was she a local? And I stopped and I said, hey, how do you get into a particular place? She said, oh, no problem. I know right where it is. She said, you go southwest. Then you want to go northeast. Like she from D.C., Monty, or something. And then you want to go south and keep on going. I said, lady, I'm from the country. I don't know what southwest is, east, west is, is in my mirror, but I don't know what none of that means. She said, well, I'm trying. I said, no, 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 don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. And then somebody pulled up with a truck. <laughs> pulled up with a truck. Had some watermelons on the back of his truck. Oh, you know he was from that town. He was going to make him a little piece of change on the side of the road. So I said, sir, what, where, how do I get to this particular place? And he put his foot on the truck. I don't know if that was going to help him concentrate more. But he put it on his bed. And he said, you just want to keep on going down this road. He said, don't stop. Don't. He said, it's going to look like you've been going forever. He said, but I tell you, if you keep on going, you're going to run into what you're looking for. See, sometimes you got to ask somebody who's been there. Is God going to come through? Is God going to heal? Is God, and I'm here to tell you, just keep on going. Just keep on going. Well, Pastor Nate, how is it going to work out? I don't know if it's going to be from the east. I don't know if it's going to be from the west. I don't know if it's going to be the north. I don't, but if you keep on going, you're going to run into what you're supposed to be looking for. And sometimes what can happen, I was talking to a guy the other day, and he was going through something. And I had been through not the same situation, but something kind of like what he was going through before. And as a pastor, he expected me to have all the answers. And he was sitting there just talking to Pastor Nate. Pastor Nate, this is going on, this is going on. And I said, man, I'm, all I can tell you is you keep on going, God is going to make a way out of no way. You keep on going, God's going to open the door, no man can shut. You keep on going, the doctor's going to say, what I saw yesterday, I don't, you just got to keep on going. But I can't really give you a one-two formula of how it's going to work out. Only thing I can tell you is, I've been there before. I've experienced it before. And God came through, but there's no particular formula for your miracle. There's no A, B step how to get from a hardship to get to your miracle. But the thing is, is when you get hardship, what do you say and how do you look at what you're going through? What's the first thing that comes to your mouth? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? What is the first thing that you're thinking about? Here in this passage, this first King 17 passage scripture, I told you, Elijah has, he, he's somebody who's working for the Lord. He's a prophet of the Lord. He makes rain stop. He makes this. I mean, he's, and he's in a situation, and he's like, Lord, where are you? And God has sent him from bad to bad works. Could it be that what you're facing, God has sent you there? Could God be sending you, because in this passage of scripture, he sent Elijah to one of the worst places where there was idolatry, they didn't believe in God, They didn't believe in prophets. They had their own people who did witchcraft and stuff. And God sent him there. Maybe God can trust you. And he's sending you there because he's trying to get some glory out of your life. 
Maybe God can trust you because he knows you're going to keep praying. He had to, this first king, he had to send, he had to have some confidence in Elijah. Elijah, that's my boy. Oh, man, Elijah works for me. I know, I, you know, he may be mumbling on his breath. He may be complaining a little bit, but I'm, I'm going to send Elijah there. Oh, man, man. Oh, I fed uh, Elijah with the ravens for so many days, and then I took him somewhere. I'm going to send Elijah because if the brook dries up, I know Elijah's still going to praise. If I send Elijah there, I know he's still going to say, God, you're worthy. I know Elijah's going to still go to church. I know God, Elijah's still going to pray. Could it be that God sees you in more in you than you see in yourself? Maybe God can't send everybody. It's some situations that God sent me in that I wish he would have let me tap out. I wish he would have sent a substitute. I wish he would have let me sub myself in. But God said, nay, I'm sending you because even though there's going to be tears in your eyes and even though you're going to be upset and even though you're going to complain a little bit, I can send you because I know I can trust you there. I can trust you there. And what happens in the story is this lady, this widow, it's just her and her son, she hears bad news that this has happened in Zarephath and she's planned just to die. She's prepared for the worst to happen. When you hear bad news, what are you preparing for? Are you preparing for God to come through? Are you preparing for him to wake away out of no way? Or are you preparing that this is the end? How do you prepare? Do you look at this as, oh, man, now, I'm saying that, but how many people know that's easier said than done. The first time I hit a trial, I don't say, whoa, whoa, whoa. God is going to get some glory out of this. Oh, thank you, God. Oh, Lord, I thank you I ain't going to eat. And I thank you that you dried out of the brook. Get some glory. And I say, God, what is going on? What's going on? And that's why it's important for you to be faithful to church. And that's why it's important for you to have somebody that's out of um, the situation of what you're going through. Have you ever um, wanted prayer but really didn't want prayer? You wanted somebody to complain with you? That's just me. You wanted somebody to tell you they understand what you're going through and it's really bad? I, that's, that's me at the beginning of my, of my dry seasons. I want somebody to sympathize. I want somebody to understand. I want somebody to say they were wrong. I want somebody to, that's, that's what I want initially. And so one of the things I know, I know who to go to and I know who not to go to. I know I should go to my mama, but I don't want to go to her. Because she's going to send me text messages of, of scripture and text messages of prayer and text messages. You a man of God and text messages that God, and that ain't what I want to hear right there. I want to hear this is bad. I want to hear I understand why you're crying. I want to hear I understand why you're upset. I want to hear I will be mad. I don't want to hear nobody say, oh, my God. Oh, you a man of God. Oh, God got his hand on you. I remember when I first had you. I said, Lord, I'm going to give them to the Lord. God is an 18-year-old. If you just save them, I'm going to give them to the Lord. And that's why your name is Nathan. It means God is with us. And that's now I don't want to hear all that. Is that just me? Anybody else? Y'all can leave me out here by myself. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear something that makes my flesh feel good at the time. That's why it's so important for you to come here because we don't know what's going on with you, but we're going to say, come by here, my Lord. Jehovah, we won't stop praising. We won't stop praising. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in his name. Something happens when I, that's what we're going to say. 
And we hoping you in here, you kind of like, mm-hmm. They saying it, but they don't know what I'm going through. And then we hope that something happens. We hope that the Holy Ghost shows up and reminds you of who you are. We hope that the Holy Ghost shows up and reminds you that you're healed, that you're filled, that you have the victory. And so you have to make sure you get around people that are outside of what you're going through. And that's what happened right here in this past description. Elijah knows his situation is bad. But he don't really know nothing about this woman. He doesn't know her situation is bad. And then God tells him to go ask her for something that she has a little of. Because he doesn't know she's in a bad situation. But out of her obedience to God, she has something that she's not even aware of. Y'all done miss your first child. God is asking you to do something and you think it's crazy, but you have something in you that you ain't even aware of. God's trying to get something out of you that you don't even know that you have. Out of her obedience to the Lord, she had something in her possession that she didn't even know that she had. The Lord is speaking about speaking to you and asking you to do stuff because there's something in you that you don't even know that you have. And beloved, the way to get it out of you is put you in a tough situation. I wish miracles were birthed out of our hear word and then something happened. I was talking to this guy. He's a, he's a, he's a prophet. He um, interprets dreams. And, and the Lord gave me this dream, and I was just really excited about it, what God had called me to be and what God had called me to do. And I met with him at, um, I cannot remember the name of the restaurant. But I met with him at a restaurant. We're eating. He said, I'm paying. And I told him what the Lord had told me. He said, oh, man, this is great. I said, yeah, isn't this great? He said, now, I can tell you how I know you're close to what God wants you to do. I said, how? He said, have you been rejected? I said, excuse me? I said, I just told you God's going to do this and this and this and this and this. He said, yeah, but have you been rejected? I said, no. He said, you're not close. And I said, oh, that's going to bring my miracle." He said, yeah. I said, you're a false prophet. I got to get a second opinion. Let me get, a, let me get another opinion. Let me get another opinion. I said, let me get another opinion. And the Lord start confirming, confirming, confirming what with more dreams. And I said, Lord, are you trying to, you trying to push me? See, the Lord could be trying to push. There's something in you that you have that you don't know about. But see, what happened in this passage of Scripture was the woman believed because Elijah believed. She got a miracle off what somebody else said. See, sometimes we want to get a miracle off what somebody else tells us. Instead of plugging in and hearing what God tells you. See, it could be everybody is silent and everything is silent because God is trying to talk to you. Thank God for your grandma. Thank God for your praying mama. Thank God for your praying big mama. Thank God for your praying auntie. Thank God that somebody's a missionary. Thank God that your granddad was a deacon. But God said, no, 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 no. I, 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 I got to talk to you. Because her first miracle was based off him, but now she's in another situation where things have gotten worse. Have you ever gone from bad to blessed to another situation? Maybe God is trying to do something through you and not just from a word that you have from somebody else. My thing is to be here to confirm what God has already told you. My thing is to be here to give you a word to make you 
Oh, and then God come talk to you. So this woman is in a bad situation. She's in a good situation, and now she's in a bad situation. But this time, she goes to Elijah herself because Elijah's a prophet. He should have known what was going on. He could have came and met her and said, hey, look, let, your, son's, your son's about to die. Your son's dead. Let me pray for him. But she went to meet him. She went to say, what's going on here? Are you slack concerning your promises? Did you change your mind what you said about me? Because you said I was going to be blessed. Now I'm right back where I am. What the Bible talks in about Isaiah, putting God in remembrance of his word. So when I pray, I'm always putting God what in remembrance of his word. Because ain't nothing changed about what he's going to do. But I'm trying to say, Lord, you remember you said by your stripes we heal. Lord, you remember you said that healing is the children's bread. Oh, Lord, you remember you said all things work together for the good of those who love them are called according to your purpose. Lord, and I'm calling. Lord, I love you. God, you said, no matter that, no, I heard that the king's heart is in your hand. And God, you can turn it whatever you way you want to. Put God in remembrance of his word. Because I've gone from what you said to what I know. She's gone from what Elijah said that she knows where she can get a miracle. She can get a miracle on her own now. So, beloved, whatever you're in and you're facing right now, I would love to give you a timetable. I would love to give you a, a place this is going to be over. I would love to tell you how this is going to end. But I just got a grandma that said, just keep on running and see what the end is going to be. Just keep on moving. Just keep on trusting God. Just keep on praising. Just keep saying thank you. Just keep standing on his words. Keep putting him in remembrance of his word because there's no formula of how to get there. But you just got to keep on moving. You got to, I'm somebody, anybody else a witness, I'm somebody, I can tell you, just keep on going. And you going to run into something that looks like God. If you stop right here, you'll miss something that God has for you. And I'm telling you, God has you in the situation. Why? Because he can trust you. He can trust you pre and he can trust you after. He can trust you pre to not give up, and he can trust you after to give God some glory. Amen. I got a friend that got a miracle this week, and I'm saying, Lord, we going to give God some glory. We ain't going to, Lord, oh, see, what I did was I went to now church, and Pastor Nate preached a message, and then I went home and I wrote it down in my mirror. I wish that happened every time. And then I got on my knee because there's been times when he shouldn't have did it, and he still did. There was times when I gave up. There was times when I thought it was over. So all I can say is, this is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in our eyes. What great and mighty things the Lord has done. How did you get from there to there? I just trusted God. I didn't always do the right thing. I gave up sometimes. There were tears in my eyes. I was wondering one, one, one time, why was I in this situation? But God could not help from being him. Because his faithfulness is great. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I need is his hand. Keep on going, and you're going to run in to something that looks like God. Do it in your own strength, and it's going to look like you. But I want something that looks like God, amen. I want to be something that says not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Keep on going. Keep on going. Look at your name. Say, keep on going. Keep on going. I don't know what you were dealing with, but you can just keep on going. Keep on going. You're going to run into something that looks like God. Amen. Put your hands together if you heard a word from the Lord this morning. Keep on going. Next week, we're talking about more than a day. More than a day. 
what to expect from being in a relationship with the Lord as a son and a daughter of God. Really not a daughter. I'll explain that next week. I'll tell you now because I want y'all to go home because I'm this, this. In, in the Bible, in that first John, it says, what great love he's lavished, lavished on us that he's called us children of God. And that's who we are. The Bible says there's no male nor female in the kingdom. So I know it may be politically correct to say son and daughter of God, but I'm going to tell you why I don't say daughter. Because everybody in here, the songs that we sang, we talked about when you open up your mouth, there's power in your mouth. It says the Lord in the beginning of Genesis said he spoke and he saw. He spoke and he saw. What they're doing there is there's casting seed. In the natural, females can only catch seed. They can't give seed. So I don't change it in the Bible to make everybody feel good, not because I'm being sexist, but I want you to be able to throw something and see something you throw. I don't want you to be able to just catch something. I'm just, I'm just taking whatever they got. I'm taking whatever they give me. No, I am a child of God. So the, the correct is child or son. So if you don't feel right saying I'm a son, you say I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Why? Because there's life and death in the power of your tongue, in the power of your mouth. It says on the tab, you can write word on the tablet of your heart that you may not sin against thee. So I just want to be clear about that. I see, Pastor Nate, I knew it was coming. No, I say child or son of God because I want everybody in here to be able to what? Cast seed. To be able to speak a thing and see what you speak. So next week we're going to be talking about being a child, a son of God, a child of God. And what comes with that. And then the following week, we're going to talk about, Lord, what are we talking about? All right. The following week, we're going to talk about, we're going to piggyback off when, when Peter, he changed his name. But Peter had a past. Peter didn't always do anything right. And God changed his name. So then he was able to pivot from his past. Anybody in here said, Pastor Lee, I made some mistakes. I need to pivot. When he changed his name, he was able to pivot from who he was and become who God wanted him to be. So I want y'all to think I'm just up here making up stuff today. I, I study. Amen. We got it planned out until January. Unless the Lord says something else. Amen. Amen. Can y'all put your hands together again if you heard the word? Sorry. So I can get off this stage and meet y'all in the door. Brother Cliff, come on, my man. Come on, y'all. Put your hands together for that delicious word from the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Y'all stand to your feet. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are so close to the greatest miracle in your life. So let me encourage you, be steadfast, be unmovable, always abound in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Expect a harvest. Give God a hand praise. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we're so close. used to say, it looks like I can see the breaking of the day. All the joy that comes my way. Y'all lift your hands. Father, right now we just ask that you strengthen our pastor, refresh him, restore virtue from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. In Jesus' name, Father, throughout this week, help your people, Lord God, to watch and pray, to enter not into temptation. I plead the blood of Jesus over every family, 
no evil will come nigh the dwelling place of God's people. I decree that whatever we put our hands to this week, we will prosper. I call the now family blessed and highly favored of the Lord. In Jesus' name, have a blessed week. Dun, 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 dun.